Hello guys, um, today we'll be um, talking about the series of Goosebumps overall. Now as you notice, I'm kind of dressy up in this one. That's not on purpose, this is just a coincidence. I have something else I have to do today, but um, but yeah. Um, we're just going to talk about the series as a whole. It's going to work kind of like a Fen Recommends episode of covering a TV show, only going a lot further in, de in depth with the show. Um, and, uh, first, um, the show, of course, aired from 1995 to 1998 for, um, for, uh, four seasons. Uh, it's rated, it was rated TBY7, but when it first aired, it was like TB. GB7 as kind of a gimmick kind of thing. Uh, each episode is about 22 minutes long. In terms of DVD release, um, the show, it's so weird. The show has, the show's always been released in various, like, DVD compilations of, like, an episode, a, a two-parter episode, or, like, a couple episodes kind of relating to each other, roughly. And then they got, like, when I was a kid, like early, late 90s, early 2000s, early 2000s really, they did that, original DVD releases. Then they did new ones where they had more episodes on the DVDs, and then they did more ones of like those DVD packages, the, the, second, the second round of, they took the second round of DVD releases and packaged them, packaged those, some of them together. But I have seen online that they're planning on releasing a complete series box set, which is very interesting and kind of, kind of, kind of awesome. But I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, this, sh this show overall is rated 7.8 out of 10 on IMDb with about 9,000-ish user votes. The show overall had 74 episodes over the course of four seasons. Its highest rated episode was the first one, uh, uh, The Haunted Mask Part 1 in Season 1. It had an 8.5 out of 10 overall with about 500-ish user votes on IMDb. The lowest rated one was Strain Peace in Season 3. The episode had 5.7 out of 10 overall on IMDb with about 100-ish user votes. The, the two actors who've been in this show the most were uh, Catherine Short, who, this was the only show, she, the only thing she's really known for, she was, she was in a lot of episodes, though, and Cody Jones, who was in, who was the uh, blonde-haired bully kid in Detroit Rock City. He's been in quite a few. The lead directors were uh, William Freight from the House by the Lake fame. I talked to him about, quite a bit about him. And Ron Oliver, who was also pretty involved in Are You Afraid of the Dark TV show. The show is actually available to stream on Netflix. All four seasons, all the episodes, a bit out of order, but it, 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 it works. Um, it's available right on Microsoft Store. It's available to rent and buy on Google Play, Vudu, Microsoft Store, and Amazon. Though I think Amazon only had one season of it, I believe. Um, now further shit. Um, more shit, um, now the seasons individually. I, what I did on this is I took the rate, IMD rating of each episode in a season, added them all together, divided by the amount of episodes in that season to get an overall IMD rating of that season. For season one, season one had 19 episodes, and that one had an overall average of 7.7 .7 out of 10 on IMDb for that season. So... So on average, each episode had a rating of about 7.7. .7. Season two, season two had 25 episodes, and that overall that episode season overall was 7.4, which means that like in season one, each episode of season two averaged to about 7.4 rating out of 10. Season three though, season three had 22 episodes, and overall that had an average of 7.0 out of 10. And then season 4, which only had like 8 episodes, but but gathered together, had an average rating of 6.8 out of 10. And I, just out of sick curiosity, I took the season's averages, I had them together and divided them by 4 to get like a series average based on these numbers, and it was 7.2 out of 10. So, sometimes with anthology shows, what would happen is when they're going to rate shows, they would usually rate the show based on the few good episodes in it. Because overall, like, 
for example, Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Dark Side had a lot of shitty episodes, but it had a high rating because because the good episodes that people did see gave them, left a, such an impression on them that they ranked the whole series high, even though it, it was just due to a few good episodes. This is a similar case to Goosebumps. Like, like, in the first season, the overall average of season one is very, very close to like the I, what the IMDb, IMDb has. But you can tell that over time, they declined over time. Of course, the first two seasons are very close together, while three and four are much on the lower end. So you can tell that the first two seasons had high quality, or a certain, like, the first two seasons, they did a bit. This is when we're going to get to over analysts kind of thing. Um, the thing about seasons one and two that I think did an excellent job in is the fact that not only did they, were they creepy and eerie, but, I mean, sure, there were some cheesy moments in this first two seasons, but they had a, they had, they had a formula down. The, the, the piano-driven score, the, the, the build-up, the, the scenery, the atmosphere, the, the great use of special effects. They didn't really use it all much, all that much in seasons three and four. There were exceptions, of course. There were definitely good episodes in season three, without a doubt. And season four had the Ghost Next Door. That's really all it had. But overall, I mean, seasons one and two are definitely the stronger seasons. Season three has probably the most misses, but it has a lot of hits too. And season four, it's, it's a poor excuse of a season, really. If you take out the bullshit to, I mean, if you only, you can just easily take the ghost next door, stamp it on season three, and, I mean, it should be really more, th like, three seasons and four, but, whatever. But, um, but, yeah, and like I was saying earlier, the thing with, you see, I, I have a fear that if they release an ultimate, like, uh, no, uh, complete series box that they'll, they might take it off Netflix, which they could. They could easily take it off Netflix. But the thing is that, for me, it's like, it's kind of bullshit that Goosebumps gets so much more help streaming than Are You Afraid of Dark? Because, while I do love Goosebumps, I like Are You Afraid of Dark a bit more, and Goosebumps... <sighs> Before rewatching this sh this show, I had... My opinion of Goosebumps was, had kind of been lowered a little bit after binge watching Are You Afraid of Dark and Goosebumps a couple years ago, but after rewatching Goosebumps, my opinion of it has improved significantly. And while it's definitely a show that you can't really watch with a hard R mindset, if you're looking for some genuine good. If you watch the right episodes, and you watch them with the right mindset, you would be surprised and impressed with them. The fact that these these actors, the screenwriters, the directors, the special effects people, they were they are given you this thing. They have to appeal to people. They have to achieve that rating of TV Y7. They have to achieve that rating. No options. So how can we accomplish being goosebumps and get that? Now, did they always succeed? No. But when they did succeed, and I think they succeeded more often than not. In all honesty, they definitely succeeded more often than not. Um, and, yeah, I think for what it was from back in the day, I think it's pretty solid. Is it better as a nostalgia watch than a straight-up watch? Probably. But I think with the right guidance and with the right research, someone can find the show, figure out the good episodes from the bad, and watch the good episodes, and I think they, they'd enjoy it. Um, and good episodes, that's all really on taste, but personally for me, the good episodes are really all the... 90% 90, 90 of the multiple parters. Um... Shrunken Head, Crab the Cat, and Deep Trouble, those, one, those ones aren't good, but the rest of them are very solid.
Very good. The ones hosted by Arl Stein are the top-notch ones, without a doubt. Um, the the for the single episode, the single twenty-minute episodes, I admit, when I first binge watched it, those episodes did not leave much of a impression at all on me. But after rewatching them, a lot of them stick out a lot better now than I they originally did. And I have to say that that. Can this show be made fun of? Sure. There's a lot of campy, silly moments throughout the show. Even the even the, the great episodes maybe have one or two of those moments. But I think the best way to watch it is just with with knowledge. Knowledge that this is a show meant for a cer a very young age group in a in a decade that has long been passed, and. The reasons to watch it, one for nostalgia, because it's a great nostalgia watch, really. And can you re-binge watch it? You could, but I think skipping some episodes is warranted. But, and if you want to know more about, more about that, just watch the, my previous episodes but um, of this. But um, if, you're, if you're just looking for something to watch, you have absolute zero nostalgia connection to Goosebumps. Could you have fun watching it? I think you could. Now, in what way, that's up to you. You may want to watch something that was cheesy and bad and kind of riff it, make fun of it. Goosebumps certainly has episodes you can do that with. But you may have to do research on that because, in my opinion, there are episodes that are legitimately good and should be watched for legitimately good reasons. That's kind of the balancing act. Trying to find episodes that are good and are bad and trying to find that balance of what to like and what not to like. And if you watch this expecting something mature and mature, you may not always get what you want. There's a few episodes that do achieve that, but I think a lot of it has to do with knowing what you're getting yourself into. And if you don't know what you're getting yourself into and you start watching the show, you may, you're going to hate it. You're not going to like it because it is meant... For a certain mindset, I mean, it's not a specific narrow mindset, but it is a mindset nonetheless. And overall, I do love the show. The moments that are awesome are fucking awesome, but it's not every episode's a winner. Not, some, you see, with a show like this, if it was meant for more, if if the if if they could have more leeway toward more mature audience. I think over, the overall episode quality would probably be a bit better, but the fact that they were limited, I think, hurts them a bit, but it also, I think, helps them in kind of maximizing on those, t taking advantage of those limitations. Like, good artists do. Like, William Frey, he single-handedly saved the show. Now, he wasn't, he didn't always hit home runs, but, but for the most part, he... He made a lot of good episodes. He was responsible for a lot of the two parts, and he he knew how to, how how to make a good show. I wish, I wish. One day, I wish I could. I mean, the guy, dude's old as shit. He's very old, but that's my roommate. But he's very old, so I don't know if the opportunity will ever come up. But it'll be. I wish I would could find something of an interview of him asking him about that show because he's made movies before this like and it's just not just movies like some exploitation movies and to go to that to go to this I mean I was I'm wondering what did he what mindset was he in and because I have to tell you, those episodes that he was responsible in, the good ones, are fucking fantastic. And they definitely deserve a watch. Now, do I think the series is a good interpretation of the Goosebumps books? Um, for the most part, yeah. But I also think that the books are usually better. But I think the show's probably remembered more because the book, there was a lot of books. And... The book stretched across the whole 90s, and yeah, it, 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 it definitely stretched across audiences, and in all honesty, I think the, the earlier books are a bit better, and 
I think the episodes that have adapted those books usually are pretty solid or good. Not all of them, of course, like... I'm trying to think. Um... Not coming to mind right now, but yeah, I I tip I think I think overall this is an awesome show to watch. I think looking back on all the episodes I've watched throughout my childhood in this, I think it's definitely left an impact on me. And while watching stuff like Art for Dark or those shows or other adult anthology shows, while those are better. This was really the first one for me. And while it's not always perfect, and it's not, it doesn't, and it doesn't, it isn't overall like super, like ultimately consistent, it, it left an impact on me that won't really leave in a good way. And I think if everyone was willing to give the show a shot, like a legit shot, in any way they want that shot to be, either cheesy and comedic or legitimate. Do your homework on the show. Figure out what's good and what's bad and what you would want to watch or what you don't want to watch. And just, you know, have fun with it. And, and for nostalgia, just enjoy. <laughs> I mean... Just keep in mind what you're watching, and keep that in mind when you're over-criticizing it, or you're trying to nitpick it, and that's the thing, that's the key. And that, don't nitpick. If you don't see a flaw in general, then there's really no point in pointing it out. If it comes to you like that, then sure, but it's fucking goosebumps. And I have to say... To, I have to say, just to end this, I have to say I really appreciate everyone that's been watching this show and anyone, and if you skipped all of them and you just wanted to see the overall summary, I get it, it's fine, but I recommend going back and watching some of the episode reviews because while they're not anything like high, they're not anything super big budgety. I think... I think if you're looking for specific thoughts on a specific episode, I think that's a good place to go to. I do cover quite a bit there. And and I, I hope you guys check those out, too, just because they put a little quick, quick insight. But insight nonetheless in those specific episodes. And this show was one of the shows that stuck with me from day one of my childhood. And it's a show that is pretty important in that way. Is it an important show overall? Kind of for my generation, but I think overall, it I think it'll be more forgotten as time goes on, really, which is kind of a shame, but it didn't really... It didn't really hit the right mark at the right time. It came... And there's a whole nother discussion into that. It's worthy of another video. But overall, I'd just like to say thank thank you guys for watching this whole this whole series. Now, I will be doing something like this again, though the show I have some ideas for shows, but I will tell you this, the next one will be a whole lot shorter and a whole lot easier because this one took a lot out of me. It it took a lot of work, but it was worth it and I loved it because it was it was nice sharing those opinions and ideas with you guys. And I hope those kind of inspire you to go back to the show and kind of rewatch it or watch it for the first time and develop your own opinions, ideas on the show. Like the show's great or the show's shit or or on individual episodes or whatever. I hope I hope th that that's that's always been my goal is to really inspire you guys to look at go back to that show or specific episodes or whatever but yeah um thanks for watching this the whole series and this whole ultimate series i will be doing more but it's gonna be a while i'm gonna take a break 
episodes from other shows should either be resuming now or have been resuming for a little bit. But I really, I really appreciate you guys getting into, getting into these episodes and I hope, and like I said, I hope they do inspire you in some way, shape, or form. But I know it's kind of weird saying with a show that's kind of built like it is this because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kid anyone. It is kind of a very simple camera in front of a guy kind of show, but it's more about like this the content, the talk more than the flashiness for something like this. I just hope that it's watching these reviews kind of makes you think or makes you want to go back. Like I said a little bit before. I'm kind of reiterating. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the whole series in general. And th thanks for watching this too. And, and yeah, <laughs> just thanks. <laughs> Have a good day.